Hey there, New Life. Hope you had an awesome Easter, spending time with family, friends, and hope that you spent some time in reflection over what happened 2,000 years ago, but more than just what happened, but also what it means for us today and the lives that we now get to live because of the price that Jesus paid, but also because of the victory that Jesus won. Now we get to live from that place of victory. I love Easter. I love uh, the celebration. love what it stands for, all of that. Um, and so earlier in my life, I watched a movie, and I'm gonna kinda explain why I'm gonna talk about this movie, but uh, uh, earlier in my life, I watched a movie, it's called Like Mike. Uh, it was a story of a young boy named Calvin Cambridge who found himself uh, a pair of shoes, a pair of basketball shoes. Uh, now, Calvin wasn't just a normal kid, he was an orphan in uh, Los Angeles, and so he had this hometown team, and he found these shoes, and the shoes were special because they gave him the ability to play basketball as good as Michael Jordan. Like, like Mike, his shoes made him like Michael Jordan. And so uh, whenever he put these shoes on, he was a phenomenal basketball player, so much so that at four foot eight inches, he got um, signed to play for the local Los Angeles team. It was like the Knights in the movie or something like that because they couldn't use an actual NBA team. But he was in the NBA at four foot eight inches because of these shoes that he wore. And as long as he wore the shoes, he was given the ability to play basketball like Michael Jordan, which is cool. And so at the end of the movie, they make the playoffs, all these cool things, his shoes break, so now he's not like Michael Jordan. But I started thinking like, Hollywood gets this idea that if we have shoes, man, we can be as good as someone else. We see superheroes, where they put on a super, they get somehow these superhero powers. Well, Christians, in a similar way, although we don't get shoes that make us like Michael Jordan, we don't get a, a cape or an outfit or uh, infected with gamma radiation that makes us like the Hulk, but in Romans chapter eight, it kind of explains Easter in a new level for me as I was reading my devotionals this last week. And so Romans chapter eight, verse 11 says this, the spirit of God who rose Jesus from the dead, like pause right there. The spirit of God that rose Jesus from the dead has to be an amazingly strong, powerful spirit. It's probably uh, the, through this spirit, the world was created through this spirit. I was created. And so what does it say? The same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead lives in you. Wow. That is a whole lot to try to unpack and understand. And if we're not careful, I think sometimes we might take a verse like that and say, thank God that the spirit of God is now at work for me to do what I want to do. And I think that that kind of misses the idea. It misses the, the point of Easter. I, I don't think Jesus died rose again so that we could just continue in the path that we live and then just sprinkle a little bit of Jesus in there. Uh, I wrote this down that the spirit of God doesn't make me a better version of myself. It makes me a new creation. Uh, we, there's a verse that says, for now there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. The old has gone and the new has come. Like, like I don't think that Jesus died and got victory for us through Easter. Um, just so that we could continue to live our lives and tweak just a few things, maybe change our anger a little bit, uh, maybe change our impatience, our lust, our, our whatever issues that we have. I don't think the spirit of God is at work in our lives just to tweak a few things. I think it's to make a totally, completely new creation, the transformation of our minds, of the things that we do. And so God's plan for our life isn't our plan with a little bit of Jesus. In fact, I think it's a reworking of who our identity is. Man, if, if we really view ourselves and understand and believe Easter, that that was not just something that we, um, it's not a story, it's a historical event. And that I get to uh, live through the victory that Jesus earned for me. And that spirit that rose someone from death to life, is that work in me? What if it's more than just me trying to get my goals and my dreams? What if the same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead is at work in me to make me less like me and to make me more like Jesus? What if the same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead is actually working to make me a better dad? And to be a better dad, I need to be less selfish. The same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead wants me to be a better husband. And to be a better husband, I need to be less selfish. I need to say, Jesus, I want to love my wife like you loved her, like you love her, like you died for her. God, let me die to myself and live for her how you would want me to live for her. 
What if the same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead is actually trying to break down your ego, my ego, how we view ourselves in terms of the world and really just wants us to rest in the fact that we're a child of God? This is such an awesome scripture, but I think that there's a lot to it that, um, man, I think Jesus wants to change more than just a few things in our life. So let me just ask you a simple question today and really allow the, the weight of this verse to hold tension in your mind this week. That the same power that rose Jesus from the dead is at work in you. So an application, uh, how might your life look differently knowing that the Spirit of God lives in you? I think our thoughts are going to be a little different. I think our actions are going to be a little bit different. I think the way that we're going to treat others, the, the Spirit of God is on the inside of me. Oh, then I need to treat my friends, like my family, my boss, the people I don't get along with, maybe how Jesus treated those kinds of people. Jesus always treated people with love and grace and respect. How do I do that? That Spirit is alive and at work in me. So let me just leave that with you today. The same Spirit that rose Jesus from the dead is at work in you today. Let me pray. God, you're awesome. Lord, what a heavy, uh, and yet God, I pray that this verse is freeing for us today, Lord. I pray that you would help us to um, be freed from the pressure and the expectations we have of ourselves to live a certain way. Uh, and God, really be um, free to the identity and the plans that you have for us. That God, we get to walk through what you have already done for us. God, I pray that you would help us to walk uh, the path that you would have for us. God, not from our own strength or from our own experience, but God, truly because the same power that rose Jesus from the dead lives in me, lives in every single one of us watching today. God, I love you and praise you. It's in your name we pray, amen. Hey, have a great rest of your week.